Hey guys, so today is advent calendar day number four and for this video I'm going to be comparing the three main coloured pencil brands for you. So I'm going to be comparing the Caran d'Ache Luminance, the Faber Castell Polychromos and the Prisma Colour Pencils. So I'm going to be doing a demonstration on them and talking about all the pros and cons and all of that. So the first ones that I'm starting with is the Faber Castell Polychromos and I've got the full set of all of these coloured pencils. So this is the 120 set, it has a really nice price range and it came in this really nice tin. So I'm going to open it up and show you inside. I've got all my other coloured pencils in a different place. I don't really keep them in this tin, but I just put a few in there to show you what they'd be like. So as you can see, they're really nice. It comes in three layers when you buy it. So this is the first layer and then it will have two more underneath. And the tin was really good because when it was shipped, there was no broken pencils or anything like that. So now I'm just going to show you what one of the pencils looks like. So it's really good quality, it's really thick and it's got a really nice diameter on it. You can't see any of like the wood at the end, it's all covered over and it's got a nice gold rim. And it just looks really nice quality, so the name of each pencil is in this really nice gold engraved look and it was really pretty. So I'm going to be talking more in detail about each of these coloured pencils and their pros and cons, but I'm just going to show you the packaging for the moment. So now I'm going to show you the Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencils and this set is a lot smaller, it's only 76 colours and it also comes with two full blenders which I like to use quite often really. So as you can see it comes in a cardboard box, it's not a tin so it's not a sturdy but what they do is they put some nice velvet, um, some nice like velvet coating on the back of the cardboard so it helps protect the layer of pencils underneath which I really really liked. There's also a really nice layer of velvet between each of the layers of coloured pencil so when they're shipped it doesn't get damaged or anything like that and none of mine were damaged. What I love about these pencils is that they're all really natural colours so you really will use all of them there's not any ones that you just won't use. So here's a look at the pencil in a bit more detail. So as you can see it's just as thick and it looks really good quality and the end has got a nice coating as well so you don't see that wood. What's really good about these pencils is the high light fastness rating, but I'll go through more of that in a minute. Okay, so I really like the packaging on these. The cardboard was sturdy enough. It wasn't really, really sturdy as the tin was for the Faber-Castell pencils, but it did the job and I don't really keep the pencils in this anyway. But even though it was cardboard, that velvet between them really gave it a good layer of protection. So now I'm looking at the Prismacolor pencils and the full set of this is 150 colour pencils, which is the biggest out of all of them. However, what I did, really didn't like about the packaging was the cardboard was really, really flimsy. As you can see, it's so easy to bend and they didn't give you any protection between the layers. So there's 150 pencils, which is a lot of pencils, so I'm really surprised when this got shipped that there wasn't any damage, because when I read the reviews, a lot of people said that theirs came and some of the pencils were broken. Um, there's six layers, well, half layers, and there's no, it's just the plastic, there's no sort of coating between them, which I thought they could have done a bit better, but this set for 150 pencils was only £120, so that's less than a pound per pencil. So they are really cheap and you can tell by the quality of the pencil, they haven't got such a thick coating and at the end the wood is exposed and you can just see they're quite thin so they're not, the core pencil isn't as protected and you can see that wood at the end. So I wasn't too disappointed with that, but it would have been nice if it could have been a bit thicker because Prismacolors are really prone to break and to shatter when you drop them on the floor because the pencil core is not adhered to the actual wood like the other two are. So if you drop the other two, then they don't actually break as much as the Prismacolor would. So I hardly ever have the other two break, but Prismacolors break so much. So here are them compared all together, as you can see the other two are much thicker and you can just tell that the quality is so much better than the Prismacolor. So what's really good about all of these free colour pencil brands is that you can buy all of the pencils open stock, which means any colour that you run out of you can buy individually instead of having to buy the full set. So I tend to run out of the white and black Caran d'Ache and you can buy these on loads of art websites, you just have to look because there's different prices on different websites so just hunt around for the best one. Okay guys, so I'm quickly going to run through the light fastness ratings for each of the three brands of coloured pencils. So firstly, I'll make the Caran d'Ache Luminance coloured pencils. And first I'm just going to run through what each of the light fastness ratings mean. So if it's light fastness of 1, it means that there's going to be no change when it's exposed to light. If it's light fastness 2, it means there'll be very, very minimal change when it's exposed to light. And then 3, 4 and 5, you can see it's progressively getting lighter. 
Okay, so this is the Caran d'Ache Luminance Colour Pencil Charm. And what's really good about Caran d'Ache is that they only have light fastness ratings 1 or 2. So at the most, there's going to be very minimal fading over time, which is really good because when you sell your artwork to a customer, they don't want to have it hanging in their house and after a few months, it looking more faded and different than what they paid for at the start. So Caran d'Ache spend a lot of money making sure their light fastness ratings are really, really good. So all they have is light fastness 1 or 2, and most of them are light fastness 1 anyway, which means they're the best light fastness you can get around. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the Polychromos light fastness chart. So they've rated it slightly differently. So it's the reverse, so 3 is really, really good, up to 1, which means it will fade slightly over time. So most of them you can see are light fastness 3, which is really, really good, and you won't see much fading at all. There's only a couple of 1s around. So that's really good. Also, what's really good about this colour chart is if you don't want to spend all the money on the full set, you can just see which colours are in these smaller sets. And then if there's any other extra colours you want, you can just buy them open stock. Okay, with Prismacolor, they're rating it as 1 is excellent, 2 is very good, 3 is good, 4 is fair, and 5 is poor. And at the start, you can see there's 2s and 1s, so it's not that bad. But if you look at the bright pinks and purples and blues, then you can see there's a lot of 5s. There's a lot and a lot of fives. There's a lot of threes as well. There's very rarely many ones, which is excellent. And there's only some twos. Most of them are three, four, and five, which, as we've seen earlier, it means they're going to fade a lot when they're exposed to light. Also, you can see that a lot of the fours and fives are skin tones, which is something that we really don't want to fade over time and wash out if you're selling your artwork. So for this reason, I wouldn't sell artwork done with Prismacolor pencils because I don't want to have customers come back to you really unhappy that their artwork, after a few months of purchasing it, doesn't look like what they wanted and what they brought and what they paid for. So I would use Prismacolors if I was a beginner and I know that I'm not going to be selling the artwork. So if you just want to practice and get a feel for the medium and you know that it's going to be a lot of mistakes because these are quite cheap anyway, the Prismacolors. So if you have to keep rebuying them, you don't want to basically waste £3 a pencil on a Caran d'Ache Luminance when you know that it's just going to be experimenting. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description to all of these colour charts so you can have a look in a bit more detail to see which one best suits you. Okay, so I just want to show you that you can get a really nice fine point with all of these three types of pencils. So they all sharpen to get a really nice point, but the difference is with the wax-based pencils, so the Prismacolor and the Caran d'Ache, they get a nice fine point, but they don't last as long with that fine point. Because they're wax-based, they're a lot softer, whereas the Faber-Castell is an oil-based pencil, so it maintains its fine point a lot longer and you can get some really nice fine strokes. Also, with Prismacolors, when you sharpen them, it gives a nice fine point here, but generally, the more you sharpen the Prismacolors over the other two, you're going to get more breakage with the Prismacolor than the others, and more lead shattering. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a little demonstration with each of the three coloured pencils. So, I'm going to be showing you the blending results you can get with each of these three types, and I'm going to be using skin tones, but this isn't a skin tutorial, and it isn't really a blending tutorial. Those will be coming up in future advent videos. This is really just to show the types of blending results you can get, and the, um, the coloured pencil's potential for blending. So, firstly, I am using the Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencils, and I started by layering the light flesh tones first, and then adding some shadows and the different tones on top. And then, I apply really light pressure at the start, and as the layers build up and I get to the final layers, I then apply a bit more pressure, as you can see, and then I glaze the colours over the top. And what's really good about these Caran d'Ache pencils is you can apply so many layers and you can glaze the colours over the top without really um, disturbing your blending layers underneath. And you can already see how smooth it looks. It's really, really smooth. And I don't really have to try that hard to get those blending results. So what I mean is, with these colour pencils, they're wax-based and they've got a really, really soft core. So I don't have to apply much pressure, even in the final layers, to get this really softer look. Whereas the Faber-Castell Polychromos are oil-based, so I have to apply a bit more pressure and work a bit harder, and it does ache my wrists a bit more, to try and get that smooth tone. So because Faber-Castell Polychromos are oil-based, they don't naturally layer and blend as well as the luminance, but you can get really nice blending results. 
it just does require a bit more work to get those nice results. So again I start by layering the lightest flesh tone first and then I go in with some darker shadows and darker tones and I use really light layers for this. So because you can have a finer point with the Faber-Castell, it naturally fills in the white of the paper a bit more than the others so it already looks a bit smoother. However to get, like with the other one, I can just go over with a certain colour and blend it all together really easily. With this, it isn't black space, so it doesn't blend as softly. So I have to really pr apply a bit more pressure to really force it to blend, which means that you can't then apply so many more layers over the top because you really have applied a lot of pressure onto the paper. And this causes some damage in the paper and flattens the tooth out, which means that once you, with the Faber Castells, once you apply that pressure to do your final layers, it's hard to apply additional layers on top. One thing I don't really like about the Faber Castell is that the colour range for skin tones is quite limited. So the Caran d'Ache Luminance have a lot of really natural colours and all of the colours in the set, like I said, you're going to use and there won't be those really vibrant ones that you're never going to really use. But with the Faber Castell, they don't have too much of a big range for portraits, so skin tones and stuff like that. So it does look a bit too fluorescent in my opinion, but it still gives you a really nice blending result. So now we're moving on to the Prismacolor pencils and these are wax based as well and I'm going about this with the same strategy that I use with the Caran d'Ache because they're wax based, they do blend a bit better and you don't have to use as much effort to blend them, however they aren't as soft as the Caran d'Ache so you do have to use a bit more pressure than the Caran d'Ache so it also isn't as easy to glaze layers over the top once you've done your, la your like first final layers if that makes sense. So. I don't think you can get as smooth a finish as with the Caran d'Ache pencils, but you do get still a smooth finish, which is really good. Considering these are the really cheap compared to the others, you do get some nice results. So now I'm going to show you the pencil strokes you can get with each of the pencils. So I'm using the sharpened pencils that I sharpened earlier. And as you can see, the wax based pencils give you a much more fuzzy look, whereas the Faber Castell Polychromos maintains a finer point. That's why I think Faber Castells are really good if you do a lot of detail work and if you do like animals with fur and stuff like that, Faber Castells are a really good option. Whereas for portraits, I think the wax based pencils are really good, especially the Caran d'Ache. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you a few clips of how I use each of the cup pencils because I do honestly use them all. So for my fan art or cartoons, I tend to use the Prismacolors because they're cheap and I'm not really going to sell that work at all. So it doesn't really need to be light fast. So I use those colour pencils because they do a really good job but they're a lot cheaper than the Caran d'Ache and I don't really want to waste my Caran d'Ache on things that I'm not going to sell. However, for some fan art pieces like this cartoon that I did, I thought the Caran d'Ache would give a nice better skin tone that he had than the Prismacolors and give a softer look because they had really soft skin. So I decided to use the Caran d'Ache for the hair and for the face on Nate from Storks um, because I thought they would give a really nice finish. What's really good with these three colour pencil brands is that all three of them work really well in conjunction with each other. So this picture of Baby Moana, I used the Caran d'Ache Luminance for her face to get this really smooth, you know, caramel skin and it looked really nice. However, she had a flower in her hair that had a lot more detail in it. So then I switched over to the Faber-Castell Polychromos and I used them to do all the detail in the flower because the Caran d'Ache would have been far too, like, soft to do all that detail and it wouldn't have looked as good. Also, for all my realistic fan art, I love using the Caran d'Ache for skin tones. So with Doctor Strange and Newt from um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, I always use Caran d'Ache pencils. And what's really nice about them is they're so opaque that they layer so nicely over each other. So when I'm doing all these different colours, they just layer so nicely over each other. And what's really nice is then it's really easy to blend. And that's how I get some really smooth blending because they're so opaque you can layer the lighter colours over the darker ones and it really like smooths them out to get the smooth blending so that's how I normally do my skin. So I like to layer the lighter colours and different tones and then I go in with a lighter colour and I basically smooth all that out by adding a bit more pressure and then I go in and I glaze different colours over the top to get the right tone. 
what I love to do with the Caran d'Ache pencil is do these beards because when you do hair the colours are so opaque that you can add those whites over the top and it really shows up to get those highlights which is really nice. Another thing that you can use like a tool with Caran d'Ache is something called like an etching tool and it's like a metal tool that you can use to scratch off the top layer of wax and it only really works with the Caran d'Ache pencils but it's really good to get some fine details with. When I do the coloured pencil work over the watercolour, I like to use the Faber-Castells a lot because, because they're fine, you don't just get a really thick wax layer over the top of the watercolour. Because they're more translucent, I do like to see the watercolour effect underneath, so I don't want a really opaque coloured pencil going over the top. So I tend to use coloured pencils, the, the oil based one, over the top of the watercolours in the background more than I do with the wax. And then I use the wax coloured pencils to do the subject. Okay, so overall my favourite is the Caran d'Ache Luminance and then I like the Faber-Castell Polychromos. I love though using those two together because the Caran d'Ache can't get the detail that the Polychromos can, so I love using them in conjunction with each other. However, if you are a beginner, I wouldn't really recommend using the Caran d'Ache straight away until you're a bit more um, practice with the medium. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future advent videos and my tutorials. And if you have any other questions on this topic, feel free to comment below and I'll answer them as best as I can. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll leave the social media links in the description and all of the other information that I've talked about, I'll leave in the description as well so you can check that out. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.